Hello, DJ Crypto here. Thanks so much for joining me uh, for another video on our uh, cryptocurrency miners. Now, I've spent the last six months building and uh, mining, uh, or you know, perfecting these miners, and I want to share with you what I've learned. I know that some of you out there are building your own miners and want some insights or you want to start building miners. So I wanted to give you a little more information so that you could skip a lot of this, this giant learning curve and get it all in one source. All right, so let's start out with our uh, the different types of, of uh, cryptocurrency miners and so that you can sit there and, and try to decide what is it you want to do? How much effort do you want to invest and how much money do you want to invest? So I'm going to give you some tips. So let's switch over here to our screen. All right, so we're going to talk about our types uh, of cryptocurrency miners, the different types of miners. So first of all, our first type of miner is an ASIC miner. Now we're going to talk about three different types of miners here. And so ASIC miners are uh, CPU miners and GPU miners. So we've got ASIC miners, uh, CPU miners and GPU miners. Those are essentially your uh, three different types of miners. The CPU miners and the GPU miners can be one and the same. Uh, you can you can mine off of your GPU and your CPU in one rig. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that too. All right. So first of all, the ASIC miners. ASIC stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. And so what that means is that um, these these miners are specific to what they do. Um, they only do one thing and what they're intended to do. We'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. So generally the ASIC miners are more cost effective. Now I'm going to show you what a what an ASIC miner looks like in just a moment. Um, and they can only be used for their intended purpose. So they're built generally by a, a company that, that puts together these ASIC miners. They're a closed unit. They're, they're like a small little brick. Um, sometimes they're a bit bigger. But these, these little bricks, you plug them in and they go. They do their thing. They're super easy to use. Um, they, they, they're already all pre-set up. You just put in your, your information that you want the money to, the coins to be sent to, and it just starts running. Um, now, uh, they, they are only made for that one purpose, so if for some reason that coin uh, you know, disappears or they, it's no longer cost effective to mine, you can't do anything with that miner. It, it only does what you bought it to do. And so it becomes a little restrictive in that sense. But it is the most cost effective. Because it's specific and it only does one thing, it was built for one purpose, it's, it's the most cost effective, uh, biggest bang for your buck if you're gonna specifically be mining for that coin. Now there's ASIC miners for all different kinds of coin, Litecoin, uh, Bitcoin, Dash, uh, Dogecoin, all the all different kinds of miners, and so you can you can look up um, on a few different locations. Bitmain is a is a big uh, distributor of ASIC miners, and uh, they have some of those available. Usually, they sell out real quick because they are the most efficient um, at the time that they're released. <clears throat> all right, they are space efficient. They're little um, in comparison to the the GPU miners. Um, they're specialized, which means since they're made for this purpose, they have, usually have a longer lifespan, uh, they have better heating uh, regulation and lower um, power consumption. So everything is optimized so that they, they only do what they're supposed to do and they take the least amount of resources to do that. So those are all the benefits of ASIC miners. Um, there are some downsides. Again, like, like I said, they're only for the intended purpose. So that leads us to our CPU miners. So CPU miners are essentially the same thing as a GPU miner except it's mining off the processing power of the central processing unit. Now, you can, you can on one computer, you can utilize the, the CPU and your graphics cards, your GPUs, um, and GPU is a graphic, uh, graphics processing unit. Now, um, you can use those both in, you know, on the same rig, but generally when you're building a, a miner, the, um, the uh, graphics cards are more efficient for the the amount of you pay to get the work done the graphics cards are better and so these are generally less efficient efficient and currently less cost effective than gpu miners so um what i recommend and what you'll see when i get to the equipment posting is you you buy a cheap a cheap cpu a cheap little little processing unit to be able to do what it needs to do to run your your graphics cards and then put your money into your graphics cards um, you're going to get more bang for your buck that way 
Then you have the graphics processing unit miners. And so they're customizable. What's nice about these is that you get to put all the pieces together yourself and you get to pick and choose what you want. Now, that can also be overwhelming. Uh, in order to pick the, the best pieces, you gotta know all the pieces that are out there. And so, uh, but they are customizable. You can, you can mix and match pieces. Um, and so it makes it a little, a little bit easier to, um, to mine without investing in, say, you know, one specific ASIC miner. If I've got a desktop computer at home, I can mine with my current graphics card because it's customizable and versatile. Um, uh, versatility, you can change between the coins that you mine. So with ASIC miners, you're stuck. If you buy a Litecoin miner, uh, you're stuck mining Litecoin. And then if, if you don't want to do that anymore, you're, you're too bad. You know, you got to go buy a different ASIC miner. But with a computer, you, you can download different software and switch between um, the different software you're, you're using to mine different coins. Now, not all coins uh, have a software that's available for them, and some only you know can can uh, utilize the ASIC miners. But in general, most you know computers or graphics processing unit computers you're going to build with, with graphics cards can mine most of the coins out there. And so um, the, the graphics card miners are generally more uh, versatile. Um, again, there are some ASIC miners that, that you can't build them you know, with graphics cards. You've got to buy them with the ASIC miners. All right. Um, and and the, the nice thing about uh, the graphics card miners is that they can mine multiple coins at once, too. If you'd like, you could mine Ethereum and see a coin at the same time. Um, you just have to run the, the proper... Uh, software so that you're doing that. Uh, the ASIC miners don't have that capability. Um, the parts uh, can be used for other things. So say you, you want to stop mining or uh, you want to you uh, resell back you know, what you purchased or you want to use your miner to play some virtual reality or, or use it as a computer. You can do that. Uh, the parts that, that you've used to build the computer are the same parts that other people use for regular computers. And so it doesn't, uh, an ASIC miner doesn't have that, that versatility to resell uh, once you're done using it. Um, they are more expensive because of their versatility. Um, they can be a lot more expensive to get the same hash rate that an ASIC miner would get. And so in general, you're spending more money for versatility. Um, and they are more compl complicated for sure to be optimized. The ASIC miners generally are a plug and play device. You get the box, you plug it in, it goes. You have to have some basic understanding to be able to input some information, and, and, opt and but it's already optimized generally. And, and, but with the graphics cards units, which I'm gonna show you mine here in a minute, um, you're, gonna, you're gonna spend a lot more time doing research on what to buy, how to optimize it once you have it, how do I overclock the cards, how do I, uh, how do I you know, flash the BIOS and all these different pieces of information? What operating system am I purchasing? Uh, what software am I using? Because there's multiple. There's all kinds of pieces of information that can be a little heavy if you're not willing to invest that time and information and energy into gathering that information. So um, hopefully that was helpful for you. Uh, that gives you a basic rundown of the different types of, of uh, cryptocurrency miners. I'm gonna show you my personal Ethereum miners that I have running right now uh, so that you can get a good idea of what those look like and how they operate. So let's go. All right, so here we are with my mining rigs that I've built. I uh, wanted to show you these so that you can get an idea of what they look like, how they operate, and I'll give you uh, parts and pieces on how to build one if that's something that you wanted to do. So here we go. All right, so we've got uh, here are my graphics cards that are running. These are GTX uh, 1070s, and they're an NVIDIA card. There are two different types of graphics cards, the NVIDIA series and the AMD series. And as you can see, I've got six running on one rig, and I've got another six running on this rig down here. And so, um, in the frame, I had a buddy custom build them. They're three high. But you can see, we've got all the parts and pieces here. And so we've got the graphics cards, which are powered on the top. And then they're all run with what's, what are called risers. And they're these little guys here that plug into the motherboard to allow spacing so that you can have multiple cards at once. So that riser goes up and connects right to the base of that card right there. And then there's power attached to that as well to, uh, to power the riser. And so I'll give you a parts list here. Um, it's pretty simple. You got a power supply, a hard drive, RAM, uh, cards, risers, CPU, and a motherboard. 
Um, and I'll let you know what I'm running and, and the results I'm getting. All right, so my miners, uh, the GTX 1070s, they're an NVIDIA card, are averaging 30 to 31 mega hashes per second, um, which is pretty good for those cards. You plug them in, don't do anything, you get 27 to 28, and then with some overclocking and some tweaking, you get up to 30 to 31. Now, um, my uh, detailed video that I'll be doing on how to actually get uh, a miner from equipment to running and functioning and making you Ethereum will be focused on the NVIDIA cards. The AMD cards are a little more uh, in depth. You have to work on like flashing BIOSes and getting them um, optimized in a little more um, a detailed way. And so once I get more information, feel more comfortable on doing that with the ones I've, curr I've currently got, I'll make a video on those as well. Um, so I'll post an equipment list in the in the uh, description below, and uh, if you've got any questions or comments, anything I can do to help you, please let me know. I'll gladly answer your questions and comments. If I miss anything, or if you feel like there's some information that's vital that you know uh, viewers should know, please post that in the comments as well. All right, thank you so much, and until next time, DJ Crypto out.